Hello, and welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. Today, I will be doing, I'm going to switch it up today because I'm short on time. It's kind of late. I have to work super early. And uh, as you can see, I'm in a hotel room, Crown Plaza, Woburn, Massachusetts. But I'm working out of town, so I had to get this done. And I figured the best way to do it would just uh, do a regular Capra comparison pick show but just do it live then i don't have to mess around with editing i'm just going to do it live it is what it is so i'm going to just play it off like though if i was recording it that's how i usually just record it and then upload it this one's going to be live if no one tunes in that's fine at least it'll be done i can say i covered them the links to all the cappers will be in the description be sure to check out the videos i did Monday and Tuesday, um, covering other select fights because I got the order way messed up. So anyway, um, without further ado, let's get into this. We're going to first discuss the fight, welterweight fight between UFC contender series come up, Michael Morales and the problem, Trevin, Trevin Giles. Is it Giles or Giles? I'm not sure. Um, Michael Morales is coming in as the favorite. He's minus 145. He's got a right undefeated record of 12 and 0. But he, to me, he's still unproven in the UFC. He's coming up from the contender series. His last fight was a win, a, a unanimous decision win against Nikolay Varentenikov. I don't know. He's um. But he, he's a fighter out of Ecuador. Um, I guess his history is uh, he was like an Ecuadorian um, national wrestling champ. That's for sure. Michael Morales, he started out doing that. And then he moved at like when he was a teenager, he moved to Mexico and started. Actually, he has fights, MMA fights on the Ecuador regional scene. But then I guess because he's he's only 22, super young, 22. Um, but his history, like I said, he was a national champ in Ecuador for wrestling. And then you know what? Let me turn off this music. It's kind of distracting, especially I'm at. I just got done with dinner at the hotel bar, and I think I might have had a little bit too much to drink with dinner. But nonetheless, anyway, as I was saying, oh, yeah, P. Diz, thank you. You're the first one. Look, first, always, always, P. Diz, always first. Anyway, um, Michael Morales is undefeated. He was a, like, a national, Ecuadorian national wrestling champ. And um, he's got this dude, even though his contender series kind of unproven, He's got a five-inch reach advantage, and he's training at Entram Gym. Entram Gym is, you know, like I, I was getting into his history. Started out Ecuador, teenager, moved to Mexico, started getting an MMA. Now he's at Entram Gym with, um, you know, there's like three other fighters on this card from Entram Gym. So they're coming in, like I like to say, mob deep. When, when you could come in with a whole bunch of your teammates, that you see every day you come into an event it's kind of it brings up the morale like that you help each other boost each other up because they all want to win as like a school unified you know what i'm seeing so that's why it's good when you come in mob deep from entram gym in mexico you know you you got you know the um you got the co-main event brandon moreno entram gym we have that the one, uh, Silvana Gomez, that girl, what's her name? Gomez Juarez or something. Silvana Gomez Juarez and Tram Jim. Another up-and-comer. What was it? I covered it yesterday. Like, uh, gee, uh, man, where's my notes? I just did the show last night. He's, um, he's going against, uh, oh, Gennaro Valdez and Tram Jim. And, um... Like I said, Michael Morales and Tram Jim. Where's my sidekick? You know, the, uh, Nick Alexander, this is kind of like spur of the moment thing. Um, yeah, we did. He, I, I kind of, I, re, I only regret taking 
Chase Sherman. Are you, <laughs> but anyway, it was still a good time, man. It was fun. It was fun that that Jake Collier got that. I think they should they should match make Jake Collier versus um who's that guy that does the he's like a five foot four heavyweight that does the jumping spinning kicks and stuff. Uh, Barnett is it Chris Barnett or something? The Beast Man, Beast Beast Man, Chris Barnett. That would be a great – anyway, anyway, yeah, we did very well, Dave and I. Dave beat me on Tapology, though, because he got a prop. He got a method and something, a method and round right that I got. I missed. I, I picked it as a decision. I forget which fight it was. But anyway, regardless, it was it was a great event. Um, I did send Dave a thing, but he's on BC time. So there it is probably around dinner, like 10 of 6, or what is it? math 10 of 5 over in british columbia canada i'm on eastern time anyway i'm back going getting back to this michael morales trevin giles trevin giles is a uh houston uh police officer i don't know if he's still full time or if he dropped down to part time for fighting but definitely i know he's a, he's a police officer from houston and he's still on the payroll so he's still on the force he's working at some sort of you know, maybe part time, maybe full time, but people are fading him because they're like, you know, the other guy, Morales, he don't have no full time cop jo cop job. So he's like all that time he spent in the gym. But um, I think Trevin Giles, Giles, whatever. I know he's a family man too. I guess wife and two kids, from what I heard. But um, I know he gets his fair amount of practice in the gym. It doesn't matter. He's the veteran here. Which is interesting because this dude, this hot prospect out of Ecuador, a lot of people, he's got a lot of hype coming behind him. Um, but Trevin Giles has beat the likes of, uh, he beat, yeah, I know he's coming off a loss to Drinkus Duplessis, the South African fighter. Um, but the problem beat Roma Delize. Did you guys hear Roma Delize? JP Bai said um, Cheyenne Blitzmas cheated on him when they were married. And is now messing around with Roman Delize. Did you guys hear that? Or is that my, I don't know if that's rumor or what, but man, bending over like that, it hurts my back. Um, you're doing stand up? No, I'm not doing stand up. I'm just trying to get this video out so I can. I got to work early in the morning, and I did have a little bit to drink at the bar, but no, not doing stand up. That's a real deal. The Cheyenne buys the JP. Or Cheyenne Vlismas, J.P. Byes. J.P. Byes tweeted something about she had an affair on me, cheated on me, had an affair with uh, Roman Delize. Talking about Cheyenne Vlismas. That's that's just facts, bro. Facts. No no stand-up comedy here. Anyway, back to this. Oh, I am rambling. Whew, I feel good. No pain right now. Um, <laughs> we have Michael Morales, the prospect, taking on... Trevin Giles, the problem, the police officer. I'm going to um, sloppily write these picks on here. Taking the favorite here, Michael Morales is the up and comer debutante, but the favorite. Taking him, we've got um, Johnny K picks. He's taking Michael Morales. He didn't say. Uh, Method, I don't believe, or I might. I listen to these guys when I'm on the drive, when I'm on the road. So I don't always get every method, but I do know who they take. Then uh, jumping over here, taking Trevin Giles. We've got both the guys from Tiger Bomb. That's Johnny and Jose. Oh, Tiger Bomb, good on you for making that. They had a they, go on Tiger Bomb. The link's in the description already. It should be, but I put it on screen. But you want to come in, Dave? I know I need a monitor, monitor, moderator. I don't know how to do that. Anyway, Dave, I sent you a link if you want to pop in here. I'll, I could use the help. But anyway, um, Tiger Bomb also picked uh, – Tre they picked Trevin Giles. Uh, they like the, the veteran experience on him. I didn't, I'm not going to write them both down. I'm going to room on the travel board. But uh, Johnny is saying by decision and – Jose's thinking Trevin Giles should get a TKO in round two. 
Then jumping back over, taking the newcomer and Michael Morales, the favorite here. We've got what's going on, Bleed MMA. He's take he like he says, um, Giles, this guy, this Morales is coming and he's hot, hot prospect, like very impressive win. I it was a unanimous decision. I don't know, but I guess this guy, 12 and 0. Coming out of Ecuador, he's like an Ecuador national wrestling champ. He's got the wrestling accolades, and the dude can strike. I see where he, why he's the favorite, but uh, anyway, bleed, taking Michael Morales. Then jumping back over here, we got MMA Fight Club. That is Manny. He is one of my new favorite cappers. The guy is so informative. He does a full card breakdown. It's like a two and a half. I shit you not. I, I listened to it all the way up to driving to Boston today. Uh, is like two hours and 20 minutes worth of this of um, MMA Fight Club. So informative, though. I just put on, I just played it and, you know, listened the whole way. But he is on the side of Trevin Giles. He's the one that gave me the info about, like, dude's married, two kids, still, uh, he said he doesn't know if he's full time or part time, but he's still a cop over in uh, Houston. So, um, and I trust that this. Manny's word, I trust it. He's he knows what he's talking about. So anyway, Manny taking uh from MMA Fight Club, he's taking Trevor Giles. And finally, for the tiebreaker, we got it's your boy eBay's eBay's fight predictions, and he's taking the Ecuadorian, the newcomer, coming off a contender series to beat Trevin Giles. But um, sorry, eBay's. Let me get let me get a colored marker out of here, out of my travel bag. I have to go with the experience in the Houston cop. You know, I don't think I think he can balance his life and get training and still. Morales, oh, what are the ages? Morales, twenty two. Let's look at that youngster, twenty two years old. Trevin Giles, 29, a little bit more mature, a little bit into the his roots as a UFC fighter. We're going to go with Trevin Giles here. Rand's going to take him. I think he's going to get it done. Um, I think he'll have a decision. That's, yeah, probably most likely a decision. That's a safe bet, you know. So there you have it. I'm going to probably, I have to erase this to put on a different fight. So uh, I will, I'll, I don't, I'm not going to put time markers in this one. This is on the fly live stream, you know. So moving on. Next we have uh, Cody. Should I wait for that one? Look, I, I scratched. I, I'm going to do it now. Cody Stammen versus Saeed Nurmagomedov. Cody Stammen. Had had a little bit of a rough patch lately, didn't he? Yeah, he's coming off a loss to Marab Divashvili, and uh, prior to that, he has a um, a loss to Jimmy Rivera, where he lost by unanimous decision. Marab also that was by unanimous decision. Uh, before that, his last win was. Uh, uh, I think it was against Brian Boom Kelleher, which unfortunately I hate to say it, that was a win right after right after Brian Kelleher heard about Cody Stallman's 18 year old brother dying of cancer. How can you beat How can you beat a guy in a fight after you found out his brother died of cancer? So I mean I know it's it's kind of tinfoil hat ish, like it's kind of like conspiracy, but uh, I don't know. Dave's in the chat. Ask him who's Dave got. Who do you, who do you got? Doesn't matter. Um, I resent that twelve step program. It's only if you have a problem. This is not no. This isn't a problem. This is just a. Yeah, it's not a problem, Dave. I appreciate the concern though. Anyway, back to this. Um, we've got Cody Stammen taking on Saeed Nurmagomedov. I will tell you, um, Cody Stammen. Fighting on a Michigan top team, but however, he does have wrestling experience in college where he wrestled at Grand Rapids University. Never went to any finalists or anything, but still a collegiate wrestler is still a, a good wrestler. But Saeed Nurmagomedov, 
he's a daggy standy wrestler. I just finished watching a like a media interview with off of um MMA Junkie with Cody Steinman. And uh John Morgan was asking him questions like what's the difference between American wrestling and Daggy Stanny wrestling? And Cody Steinman said it was more like Daggy Stanny is more like upper body, like Greco Roman. Whereas an American wrestling has a lot more leg takedowns, like he attacks the legs a lot more. Cody Stallman, he knows wrestling because he wrestled at the, you know, he's Grand Rapids University. He's fighting on a Michigan top team. I didn't recognize any names there. Of course, Saeed Nurmagomedov is fighting out of Dag Fighter. And he does have a, Saeed has a five and a half inch reach advantage and a two inch height advantage. Uh, despite the casual knowledge, he is not at all blood related to Khabib, but he is cousins to Omar. Omar is probably the least best Nurmagomedov, but Saeed's Omar's cousin, no relation to Khabib, except for they do know each other back from, you know, the Dagestan, that whole community and stuff. And they're all like all those, you know, Dagestanis. So they do know each other as their friends, but there's no blood related. Um, Heoni Barcelos did out wrestle Said. I totally agree with you. I, yeah, Heoni Barcelos. I wish I picked him on my unranked contenders thing, but I think the chat, you know, chat, the chat has in my unranked contender contest with Dave, BC Dave, and MBA, and the chat, the chat has two people in this week's card that can come. come I'm not at home, so I don't have all my notes from the contest but i know they have they have henry barcelos he's on this card and they have somebody else that's on this card i want to say same weight class too i forget who it was but uh they i know they got two people on this card that if they break into the top 15 they'll be in the lead with the contest oh look at look at my friend dave what's up buddy you, you done you done bad mouthing me calling me an alcoholic and <laughs> huh? Ah, she's getting me back. Ah, ah, ah. So, um, what's going on with you? Done with work? What time is it? Six o'clock over there, right? Oh, yeah. Six o'clock. Kids' basketball game's done. I'm getting terrorized by my puppy. Yeah, I see that. I'm trying to get a little clout, showing the dog off. Jesus. It's amazing anyway, I just got done covering. I just got done covering uh I didn't even make my pick yet, but I, I was oh I did. I got done covering uh Michael Morales, Trevin Giles. Is it Giles or Giles? Giles. Um, Giles. So soft G. I picked um I'm taking Giles. I'm taking him. With but uh I know you're high. You were telling me before they see when I when this first announced that you're a big fan of Michael Morales, the Ecuadorian I am wrestler. He's yeah. he's he might be something special. Like I said, you can only take a UFC contender series fighter if there's something special, like like Borshev last week. But this I'm guy just, might be something special. But I think Trevin Giles is something special. I think he is something special. I'm just wondering how good Ecuadorian wrestling is. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't think they. I don't think he ever. I don't think they ever medaled in the Olympics. I'll tell you that I don't think that's ever happened. So <laughs> that's he's another. Still decent yeah, wrestling. He's gonna have some decent skills on on the mat, right? Well, you gotta think, Trevin Giles. If he's a Houston cop, he's gotta know how to give bring take bring a guy down, take down. You know what I'm saying? That's part of his job job set. You yeah. Know? Still, but anyway, I'm, um, I'm fading cops and firefighters. I'm done with them. All right, look at you, hater. <laughs> um, <laughs> Blue lives matter. So you're taking uh, Michael Morales in this anyway, right? I am, yeah. Good for you. This might be our T-shirt bet this weekend. We'll talk Ooh. about it Friday, but this might be it because I'm. I think Michael Morales is gonna. You know, Trevin Giles ended Roman Delizze's. Oh, Roman Delizze went into that fight eight and O, oh, never lost before. Trevin Giles took care of that. Yeah, hey, listen, I still have days to change my mind. You do, you do, but that, as of right now, you're taking Michael Morales. Anyway. We're moved on. Now I am on Cody Stammen versus Saeed Nurmagomedov. So bear with me as I'm going to write down 
the capper picks they're in the description already i gotta mention them anyway and i did the you know this is just you're just hanging out hanging out as i do a capper comparison pick show I'm good with this. that's all it's all good so anyway we've got um cody stamen saeed nurmagomedov look at those odds cody stamen plus 162 they're hot off of bet online Nurmagomedov minus 187. Look, I scratched out that messing with the travel board, but two and a half rounds, that's supposed to say. Over is minus 300, so they think it's going to go to decision. Under is, minus, is plus 240. So here we go. Cody Stammen, he's coming off a loss against the machine, Marab Davashvili. He's a, he is, that dude's a beast, though. Get, am I right or am I wrong? Then before yeah. that, he lost to Jimmy Rivera. Jimmy Rivera's not bad, you know, decent. Um, he's 2-2-1 two, two, and one in his last five. I know he has that win against Brian Boom Kelleher. As I, was, I already mentioned this earlier before he came on, that was kind of weird because Brian Kelleher just realized he's going to fight a guy whose brother just died of cancer. How are you going to beat a guy up that's brother just died? Of, how, how can you do that and have a heart and sleep at night? So I think that was Brian Kelleher, to be honest with you. I hate to say it, it's so horrible to say, but I think he was holding back because of that fact, because he's a good guy. Anyway, Saeed Nurmagomedov, he's coming off a win against Mark Striegel. He got a, a left hook to a ground and pound. My bad. <laughs> and um, – and he, before that, though, he had that loss to Heone Barcelos. Heone Barcelos out-wrestled him. He's a better wrestler than, than the DAG fighter. Um, but the dude, like, he's he's 14-2, and two and he's Dagestani, you know. So he already, you already have the tax because his, his name ends in V. And you have the tax that he's a Nurmagomedov. That's extra tax. You know what I'm it saying? Is. So, I don't know. This is an interesting fight. I want to... We'll see. I'm going to show you what the cappers have to say right now. Taking the favorite in Saeed Nurmagomedov. We've got what's going on, Bleed. Do you watch uh, Bleed MMA picks? I do sometimes. He's all right. I'm in on his Patreon. It's cheap. It's like it's only like six bucks a month or something. Like so I don't, stupid like that. I don't then like have, watching anybody before I make my own picks. Then I'm, I make my own picks and then I. You know, step one. Then I watch everybody else and change my mind. Oh, really? I let them influence me. I soak it all in. <laughs> I soak it all in and differentiate. Um, then I've got um, taking Cody Stammen. We've got it's your boy eBay's eBay's fight predictions. He's out of uh, Oakland, California, I do believe. He's saying by decision for Cody Stammen. Um. Back over to Saeed Nurmagomedov. He is the favorite here. Got to keep going to him. We've got uh, Tiger Bomb, both those dudes, Johnny and Jose. Um, Jose is saying by decision. Johnny, I don't think you really said. Then taking Cody Stallman, we've got MMA Fight Club, Manny. He's saying Stallman by decision. And finally, to close it all off for the tiebreaker, we have got Johnny K picks. Johnny K is taking Saeed Nurmagomedov. So the cappers, the majority, are on the side of Saeed. The favorite, minus 187, over Cody Stammen. Uh Me, this is very tough. I just... Like I said, I watched that um, media day thing with John Morgan, you know, Vlad's arch enemy. But <laughs> I just watched that. And I watched he, he did like an interview with Cody Stallman. And uh, Cody Stallman was like, he had the cowboy hat on and like a fur lined coat. He looked, I don't know, he's got his own clothing style out, I guess, on Instagram and stuff. But this guy, he, he looked. Um, he looked good, and he looked confident, and I, I kind of like that he is American wrestling, and he knew all about it. He, he explained to John Morgan what the difference was and all that, 
that shit impressed me a little bit. Said Nurmagomedov, I think he lost to Hanu Barcelos. Aside from that, the people that he beat, like Ricardo Hamos, he's okay, but nothing spectacular. Mark Striegel, like I said, another, you know. Cody Stavon went lost decision to Marab Divashvili, the machine, who is awesome. And I I don't know. It's very, who you got here, Dave? What I'm I'm still on the fence. I don't know. This is a tough one for me. I'm I'm on the I'm I got I cannot take Cody Stamen on this in this fight. Ooh. Coming off Simple of man two losses, bringing up coming off of two losses, and on top of which that win over Brian Kelleher wasn't very impressive. Right, I told you about that. How are you going to yeah. beat somebody and whose brother that was a, And then before that was uh, Yadong Song, majority decision. Uh -oh. I get it. Another master of sport. You know, I can't go against those guys. I Just know. like Slava Claus. You can't go against a master of sport. I did, thank you, Real News MMA. I did not know that. He's a master of sport in amateur MMA. <laughs> the master of sport is a tough Tough accolade to get. You can't just, they don't just hand those out. I don't know. That might be a changer, but I don't know. I really, I want to go for the American. I want to go for morale or um, I want to go for uh, Cody Stammen. But uh, Noah Allen, Stammen, let's go. I like that. Longo said he was working with Stammen on Anik and Florian. See, I like that's why I love the chat. They they watch these interviews and shit that I can't. You know what I mean? That they that's why it's good to have this live stream. Um Do you care about the reach advantage or the height advantage? Saeed's got the five and a half inch reach and two inch height. You know what? My back is starting to hurt. I'm I'm an old man. I gotta get a chair. It's gonna cut my whole body off, but whatever. All right, much better, much better. I still got, I can still reach this thing. So, um, you know what? I'm going to, in the beginning, I was fading Stamen, and I think I got to stick with that. I think Nurmagomedov is just better. Stamen, he's, he wrestled in college, but so did I. Doesn't mean anything. He never went, we never won a championship. You know what I mean? Just, just because you joined the team doesn't mean you're fantastic. <laughs> That's right. But um Yeah, keep going. I got you. Don't worry. I've been here before you. I think you're pay paying up for Khabib's name and connections. Right. I know. That's the casuals are because they don't know. They think Oh, you got the same name. Must be related. He's not even blood related to Khabib. He's related to Omar. Omar is the like the worst of the Nurmagomedovs. That's who he's related to. Simple man saying Stalin has to take him down to have a chance. I think I agree with you, but uh, it's is Cody Stalin like an accolade? I know he wrestled in college, but did I got I didn't ever read his wiki or anything like that. Um, I'll, I'll check it out right now. Saeed, though, he's a dag fighter. So he, those Dagestanis got some. And But I like that MMA junkie interview today. The, like the, he was talking about the difference between Dagestani and American wrestling. Cody Stammen is an American mixed martial arts currently. Being, see, this doesn't – I'd have to go actually into Wikipedia, I think, to get his whole Cody Stammen. I'm not deep diving that deep on Cody Stammen. I mean, I can make a valid opinion right off. He has a draw against Yudong Song. That's impressive. But, um, and, you know, he lost to Aljo, which is all right. That was when Al Jermaine Sterling was still a fighter, not an actor. Um, yeah, look at this streak he had from 2014 to 2018. He went on a Big old undefeated streak. I know it was uh, most of it was regional scene KOP, but he does have a couple UFC fights toward the end of that streak. And then he lost to Aljo. Then he beat Al Alejandro Perez. Draw against Yudong Song. Beat Brian Kelleher, but that was the suspect fight because I said, how's Brian Kelleher? He's a good guy. He's not going to go in, in there and beat somebody whose brother just died of cancer. He can't do it. I can't do it. He can't do it. Nobody can do it. 
Not anybody with a heart. So I have I'm fading Stam in here. I'm gonna have to go with Saeed. Just that's what my brain says. I know I've been I'm a little tipsy, but my brain is saying Saeed Nurmagomedov is my pick. Probably a good you call. You too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so how do you think it's gonna happen? I think decision. Or you think um, yeah. I think Saeed's gonna knock him out. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Within distance. Stamina, he's got what's his last losses there? Unanimous decision. He made it to the distance with the machine, Marab Davashvili. If he can't knock him out, Nurmagomedov can't. So I was thinking maybe submission, but I'm going to go decision. Decision for Saeed Nurmagomedov, the second worst Nurmagomedov after Omar. <laughs> um, is it Umar? It's not even Omar. It's Umar, I think. Anyway, moving on. Finally, I've got the fight. i got to race the board quick, but I'll discuss it. I've got the fight between... Um, between code or I'm sorry, Hadolfo Vieira, the black belt hunter, and Wellington Terman, the um, acne scarred face guy from Brazil. Wellington Terman is the underdog here at plus 175, the prodigy. He's coming off a close split decision to Sam Alvey, which I was had money on Sam Alvey. I think Sam Alvey should have won that because at the third round. Wellington Terman poke gave him an eye poke, got warned by the by the ref, no more eye poking, and then he ten seconds later he rakes his eyes, he like digs his fingers right through him and rakes his eyes, gets two points deducted, and still comes out as split decision winner against Smiling Sam Malvi, the country's favorite guy to watch lose. You know what I mean? It was so horrible for Sam Malvi, horrible. And um, Hadolfo Vera though. On the other hand, this dude, he was the black belt hunter. He's got so many grappling fights, so many, and he beats everybody. He's like a super grappling champion. Mm -hmm. There was like, if you look at his topology, there's a guy back in like 2014, he lost to twice. Never, that guy had his number. And then recently, 2019, there was another guy in the grappling scene that seemed to have had the um, Rodolfo Vieira, like he beat him twice in grappling tournaments, but I never heard of these guys. Cayenne Duarte. Yeah, you got you got tapology up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that guy, you know, some people just didn't know how to beat other people when it comes to jujitsu. But everybody is kind of like, oh well Fluffy Hernandez, he he's a purple belt and he choked out Hadolfo Vera. That's because Hadolfo Vera gassed out. Didn't he had nothing coming in the second round. He was totally but he fixed that, and you can see how he fixed that when he went against uh, who's the um, Dustin Stoltzfus, the German guy, right? Um, and, yeah, he's like he's from the German German regional yeah. scene for sure, Dustin Stoltzfus. So in that fight, a he showed he's been working on his striking because he was actually the first few rounds before he brought him down in round three and got the rear naked choke. He was first round one and two. He would he didn't even go to grappling. He was striking and out striking this dude, Dustin Stoltzfus. Now I don't know if it's because Dustin Stoltzfus sucks or if Adolfo Vera got better. That's the question. But now he's going against this guy, Wellington Terman. Wellington Terman. This guy, I am not impressed with this guy because he lost to uh, Dierte, Andrew Sanchez, Dirty Sanchez. And then he lost – that was a ground-and-pound round one. Then he lost to Bruno Silva, who was a chat pick in the – remember the contest? Mm -hmm. You still, you know the chat has two fighters this weekend that they picked in the contest. Yeah. Ilya Tupuria, that's your guy. He's in there. Mm -hmm. You have a fighter. I, I don't have any fighters this weekend. But uh, you have Ilya Tupuria. Chat has um, Heoni Barcelos and somebody else. But anyway, um, as I was saying, Wellington Terman, he lost to Dirty Sanchez. Then he lost to Bruno Silva, both by 
first round ground and pound. Then he came back with a he's all proud of it. Split decision win over Smile and Sam Alvey. Really? Split decision win. Smile and Sam Alvey. And he, you know what I'm saying? It's not, that's not like a accomplished feat nowadays because Sam Alvey gets the worst robbery decision. He's like the male version of Angela Hill. That's she right. She could beat the sh- she can be Angela Hill beat the shit out of girls and still the, the decision against her. Oh, I feel bad. I feel so bad for her. I think she's got the record of split decision losses in the all of UFC, I think, with I think five, five split decision losses. Horrible. <laughs> but anyway, um Sam Alvey, he's the male version. He's he get he got robbed. He had a song you dong fight, he had a draw. He clearly beat Song Yudong. Song Yudong was shocked, was shocked when when they said draw, and he was happy about it because he thought he had lost. You can watch, rewatch the fight, but um, we got uh, Sam Alvey, poor Sam Alvey. Then he had like uh, that robbery against Wellington Terman, and uh, I'm just writing the odds now. The over under set at one and a half. Because they're thinking Hadolfo Vera is going to sub this dude. I'm telling you, that's what the, that's what everybody thinks. And that's what, you know, I think uh, Tapology is like 92% of the pick is taken Hadolfo Vera. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's something like crazy like that. 92%. Right? Yeah. Unbelievable. Everybody's got the doubts about Mr. Wellington, Terman, the prodigy. So I did do a Capra consensus or Capra Paris picks. Oh, I just spoiler alert. I said con- the word consensus because that's what it is. Everybody in the world is taken. And you know what the odds though? See where it says 205 Vieira? I'm glad I waited. He was a minus 285. Ridiculous dis- gross odds. Um Hadolfo taking him i'm just gonna write these down quick because you know like i said everybody's taking them both the guys from tiger bomb they're both saying round two johnny's saying by ko jose is saying by submission then we've got um bleed also taking viera mma fight club manny of course taking viera all these guys like i said everybody that's on this show is taking hut off of Vera. I don't know, not a person taking Wellington Terman. That just because of that, it might be it's a trap. You know, it might be a trap, but I don't think so. I think uh, Hadolf Vera is gonna win this by submission. I'm gonna give it give that answer right now. But yeah, everybody on the show on this show is taking Vera. Who did I leave out? Johnny K. Yep. Easy pick. This is a full capper consensus. Not a single soul taking Wellington Terman, and I don't blame them. Somebody is because that used that plus one seventy five used to be a plus two twenty. That means money somewhere is coming on Wellington Terman. Somebody is doubting the cardio of Fidel Vera after he got um, beat by homeboy Fluffy Hernandez. Oh, Nick Alexander, he's taken term in by wrestling, wrestle downing tank drainage. That that is the way to victory, I guess. I guess everybody's doubting. It's a trap. That's right. It might be. It might be. Um Hadolf Vera minus two eighty five in the beginning. Now he's minus two oh five. I I don't know. They're making it's it's very odd. Um but I just I can't take a guy that snuck through a getting a split decision victory against Smile and Sam Alvey. I love Smile and Sam Alvey, good dude. Like I'd like to hang out with him and stuff. But his fighting days, he's, he's just I feel bad. So I'm gonna have to go with the side of the black belt Hunter Hadolfo Vera. I think he's he's taking care of his um, little cardio problem. I think he's gonna get the victory here via. Submission. I would say probably round two. And I'm assuming you're gonna pretty much say the same. Or are you yeah. taking well into Terman? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, you are taking dinner. Wellington. Wellington isn't like beef Wellington. Isn't that a dish? You're it a is. cook, right? Yeah. What is it? Is that like steak tips or something? It's like a roast that's wrapped in uh, a breading. It's really good. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So that was that was a quick look at that. Forty minutes. I'll, I'll chat a little bit before. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll finish one more beer and then I'll uh, close this up. I do have to get up early for work. And over, over this side of the country, it's 930. So one more beer. I'll chat with you a little bit. And then um, nighty night for ranch. Yeah, it's only 630 here. Nice and early. Yeah, I know. I know. That's what messes me up on weekends because you're always... You're always drunk before I am. I'm like, what, dude? It's like twelve o'clock. Oh, it's it's nine o'clock over here. I'm done. I'm hitting hitting the hot tub. I'm, not, I'm done. It's all your slobbered speech at nine o'clock and night. Hey man, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, dude. We do it. We start early here. <laughs> yeah, because because you're on three hours behind the rest of the real world. Anyway. <sighs> Did we get to talk about last weekend how we kicked ass? No. Yeah, somebody said said we did like, at the beginning of this program, the beginning of this live stream. Someone yeah, pointed out how. Yeah. Um, My first time right here, Nicky Alexander. See you and Dave killed it on Tapology last week. Damn My first straight. time winning gold milk, or tied tied for first on gold milk. It was awesome. That's the MMA holes contest. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. You said they're. Um, they're trolling. They're talking shit about me because I was over on Dev the Dudes. No, so no, they were, they were they were just you know they were uh, commenting on how we had a show on a live stream show doing on Friday picks. nights. Yeah, and we happened Friday to be nights. one and two after like eight fights. <laughs> oh, we got we only got the last two wrong, and you know what? I had a feeling Jake Collier was going to pull it out I of his ass. Both of those were 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 tough. Embe tried to. Talk me out of guitar or talk me out of uh, Giga. Yeah, I know that she listen. the whole in the chat. She was all about Qatar. She told everybody that. Somebody listen. in my comments, Fashion Wars, that guy, Fashion Wars, he made a big comment about MBA. He's like, props to MBA. I got to give all due respect. She tried to tell us all that Qatar was going to beat yeah. Giga. Yeah, congratulations. You know, mind you, she good didn't on do her. Shit What's that? She didn't do too shit out overall. Oh, she wasn't even in the tapology, was she? Uh, she's she in. It. She's in my tapology because uh, she challenged me to a three game. Oh, but she she's too good to come into the group tapology. She's gonna challenge challenge you. Wait, you think uh, you're special now? She's engaged, dude. And her if you want to know, she went five for ten. Her fiance hates you. I'm sure he does. <laughs> he's five for ten. <laughs> All right, okay. what did I take? I I'm love gonna all re haters. To recap, I've got Trevin Giles. What did I say? I think he's going to win a decision. Okay, then I have um, Saeed Nurmagomedov reluctantly, reluctantly against Cody Stein. I still might flip on that. I got, you know, I got to take it. I'm going to rethink this after the face off, see how they look. Cody Stein, the interview on. It was impressive. I liked the interview. He he looked good. He looked confident. He had the stupid cowboy hat with the fur lined jacket. Check it out. Saeed, I don't even think he can speak English. So I don't know. And he's yeah. I'm on the fence, but I guess for gun to head right now at Tapology, I'm gonna pick Saeed. Only because he I think he's just Probably well more well rounded, you would think, right? What's the age difference in these folks? Uh Said's a little bit older. What by what, like a year or two? Uh where am I? There he is. Uh Said's oh no, Said's twenty nine, Corey's thirty two. Twenty nine, you say? Yeah. Said. Twenty nine. Yeah. He looks like an Amish guy that lives down the road from me, Said does. They got the same and haircut. Two inch height advantage and the five and a half reach advantage. Yeah, I know. That's what that's a big tipping point for me. Big time tipping point. I think he's gonna have it on the feet, but if Cody Stobbins brings that shit to the ground, he's got 
he's got a fire. Like I said, he does have rest, college wrestling experience, which is, means a big deal. I don't. I'm gonna go Saeed though because of the fight, the tail of the tape advantage. You know what I mean? Height and reach. I think he'll probably get a decision. I hate taking decisions, but hey, you want the right answer. It's what I think. Then finally, I'm taking Hadolfo Vieira, not by decision. I think Hadolfo Vieira is going to get a submission over Wellington Terman in round two. That's my pick on tapology for you guys. I'm going to parlay Hadolfo Vieira, Saeed Nurmagomedov, and Trevin Giles all together. Trevin Giles is the underdog, so that will boost my parlay. But I'm going to par – you know what? I'm on bet online right now. I'll do it right now, guys, and I'll tell you what it pays out. I'm taking Hadolfo Vieira, minus 205. I'm taking um, Trevin G Giles, the cop. Where is he? Trevin Giles. Right there he is. Um, plus, or, I'm, minus 105. He went. Oh, he's now he's not a plus number anymore. That boo. Boo on that. Boo on the price changes. And finally, I'm going to take uh, – Saeed, reluctantly take Saeed. I kind of want to take Cody Stammen. Okay, USA. But I, I'm going to have to go with Saeed. He's uh, minus 187. So those three parlayed together will pay out a clean um, plus 345. Not bad. Confirm bet. There you go. Placed it. Like I said, after every capital comparison show, I do my thing. So, do you like Victor Henry for the big upset, Jack? Um, no. I think he only Barcel is going to – it's just bad. Poor luck on Victor Henry that I got matched up against a beast. Victor Henry, I would take him – uh, after, after he, if he's still around the UFC, hanging. I, do you know how many fight contracts did he get? Did he get like a three? Uh, usually, usually they do, right? Like that green haired dude that got beat up by Sean O'Malley. Even he, he even got a three fight contract. What was his name? Yeah, but the thing is, is that it's either three or five, but they'll cut you now. They don't care anymore. I don't know, but Victor Henry, he's been fighting very well in like. Uh, Outside the UFC. Like, he's a champ in one of those regional scenes. And he was going against all odds over in Ryzen and Pancrase. You know, in Japan, they don't want the white guy to win. In no, Japan, they make – they they'll, like, sabotage your hotel room and shit. They'll do funny, weird sh – I shit you not. They'll do weird I shit to, just to give the Japanese fighter an edge. And Victor Henry's over there, overcame all those little weird, shitty things – and still became like a, I think he's like a rising, undefeated in rising, which, hey, whatever. But Heyuni Barcelos, is, his wrestling whole nother, he was ranked number one for wrestling in Brazil. Then he was ranked number, like, top two in all of South America, like two-time world champ in South America. All the whole continent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... How can you how can you go against that, Victor Henry? I mean, good on him, but like I said, I'm gonna hedge bet Victor Henry. That's about that's all you're gonna get on me. I I don't think he's gonna beat him, but I will throw a half a unit. I'll do a scratch off ticket onto it, just cause he's big old odds, biggest on the card. Yep. So um, that wraps up all my sh shit. I will show it once again. To recap, I already did the recap, but I'll say it, show it. I had Trevin Giles by decision over Michael Morales, your your homeboy. Then I have Saeed Nurmagomedov reluctantly against Cody Stammen. And finally, Adolfo Vieira, submission round two over Wellington, steak Terman, breaded steak, right? That's what you said it was, breaded steak. Wellington, okay, beef sure. Wellington. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Does it have like a gravy? Close. Does it have a yeah. gravy or just with, it. with gravy? It comes with gravy, yes. You got oh, me, me and John Morgan would devour that. 
Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to cover, I still got to cover Ilya Tuporia. Oh, I didn't even, I got to start doing research I, and I got to work tomorrow too. It's going to be rough, but I'll get it done. I have good work ethic. Tomorrow I'm covering Ilya Tuporia, Charles Jordan, and then Brilliant. the co-main event, Brandon Moreno, Divas and Figueredo, which you will be surprised with my pick, I think. And finally, the main event of Cyril Gan and Francis Ngannou, the Predator, looking like Marshawn Lynch. Well, not anymore. Now he cuts his hair. He looks like the boss from Spider-Man. But I'm saying he did. When he had the Predator hair, he looked like Marshawn Lynch from the Seattle Seahawks. No joke, right? True. Look at his topology picture. Now, I, you know the thing is Ngannou, I kind of want to go for him, but the thing is, He's not focused. He's his mind is oh, I want to fight Tyson Fury. Yeah, I'll be the bag. I'll be in your movie. He's been like doing movies things and oh, bitching yeah. to Dana White about I'm not doing any fights less than a half a million dollars. Get the fuck out of here with that nonsense. Where Cyril Gan the whole time, he's punching bags over at fight at uh fight factory with Fernand Lopez, who they, they got a picture of Ngannou from when he trained there and put it right on the punch bag. <laughs> no, nope. Ngannou's too busy buying homes and doing movies. And, yeah, and... you're right. He's got the silver streak in his hair. That's graying from stress, money stress and shit, for real. Sirogan, I think, is more elusive. I keep thinking of – did you ever see that boxing match where Muhammad Ali is in the corner and dodges mm -hmm. every single – punch in like a barrage of punches and he and he just saw a meme his... like that a couple days ago what's that i saw a meme like that a couple days ago i think that's what it's why like, it's uh, fresh on my yeah, brain i probably saw the same thing against coronavirus or something like that yeah i think i saw it might, might have saw the same thing but yeah he was not getting hit at all and i think uh i'm not saying cyril gan has got moves like a butterfly sting like a bee but he does he is elusive enough i think to avoid the big heavy punches from Ganu. And if it does happen to, if he managed to get some sort of takedown stuff, he's got leg locks. He's beat people with, with submission, like ankle locks and shit. I'm sure of it. I don't know. I'm taking, I think I'm going to say Cyril Gan and new and I new. So. As for the other, the, I think he wants to go to boxing anyways. I think he wants to. Yeah, he wants to fight Tyson Fury. Contract. If he wins, he's he has to fight once. Uh, he has to fight uh, once. You know it is? It's because he's getting greedy. So yeah, he doesn't want to win. That taste of money. He got that taste of money. He wants to. Well, I want to fight Tyson Fury. I'll be in movies. Hey, Dana, we're not making enough money. How how much money you need, Francis Ngannou? You come from Cameroon. Everybody in your country makes like eight dollars a day, and you're fucking crying over. I'm not gonna fight for less than ha half a million dollars. Get the fuck out of here, that bullshit. I'm going with Cyril Gan. I know. Ask me how I really feel. <laughs> and then, but the another one that's very tough is um. Brendan Moreno, Davidson figure. I'm covering these tomorrow on a Capra comparison pick, but we'll talk about it right I now. Won't I won't say forgot. I'm a Brandon Moreno fan at all. I think I'm going to go Figueredo in this in the trilogy because uh, I think he's got something. He's got a chip on his shoulder. I think so. And Brandon Moreno talking about you know playing with Legos and shit. And you know what? From I heard from. Uh, eBay's fight prediction, Brandon Moreno is a little backstabbing bitch. He was like, um, he was training in like Triple C, Henry Ciudo's camp. And then right before he, uh, Henry Ciudo fought Joseph Benavides, he flipped sides and started training Joseph Benavides on how to beat Henry Ciudo. Well, it failed though, because he didn't beat him. But I heard that, and I, you know, that's kind of shitty. You don't do that shit. You don't. You don't flop from, oh, I'm, I'm going to live with you in your apartment and oh, I'm all about fight ready. Oh, you got to fight against Joseph Benavides? 
and he calls me up and he wants me to train with him and i've been living with you knowing all your like uh your weaknesses and all your you know that's kind of that's i don't know it might Maybe just that be that was the plan Maybe yeah but it didn't work position. though because henry ciudo never lost to joseph benavidez joseph benavidez is hyped up he's not even as good as good as hyped Maybe he was me. playing a double agent and actually giving Henry Cejudo some information. You never but, know. Um, the whole thing with um, Davison Figueredo, he is known to, like, I, from what I've heard from the cappers, the last fight where he lost to Brandon Moreno, he had a bad weight cup, and you can see it in his face. You can, in the weigh-ins, his face was sunken in, yeah, and he horrible. had, the, and you can, it was visible. And he, I guess, he walks around like his average non-fighting weight. 165 and so he's got to cut off what is this at is this a bantam bantamweight fight this one yeah it's a flyweight it's a flyweight championship 125 yeah. pounds if he, he walks around at 165 so that means he's got to cut 40 pounds of weight and you know what it's really hard to cut weight as you get older and he's 34 and not getting any younger and plus, and, he's already has zero percent body fat to lose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, That's why right now I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait until how how I see what he looks. But uh, without without looking at the weight situation, I I think uh, Davis Figueredo, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got that that pride that something he's got. But you know, Brandon Moreno's got the Mexican toughness, but still, yeah. I think. And Figueredo, the move to fight ready with with his Henry Ciro, the move over there to fight ready. Yeah, I think this is Nick Alexander. Look at oh, here class. you go. Get in the drama, Nick Alexander. Yes, about the whole Figueredo, or no, about the whole Brandon Moreno training Joseph Benavides as he after he left Sahiro, you know. And now Cejudo is training Davison Figueredo to fight Brandon Moreno for to the trilogy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna go with the with Davison Figueredo. He can lose. He can lose that way. He's done it before. Yeah. I think, and he's smarter this time. He's not gonna wait to the last week to suck himself dry. He's gonna. I think uh, he already. Last I heard on like Instagram or or Tapology, this was like a couple. Not tap on Twitter, Instagram. Like two days ago, he only had nine pounds to go before hitting weight, and that was er that was earlier this week. So you, you you walk around with about twelve pounds of water weight in your body at all times. Yeah. So if he had to, he can dehydrate himself and make weight. That's a good sign. That and he's still got today's only Wednesday, so he's still got time. You know what I mean? What's that? A little Mexican Moreno, all over him. <laughs> don't don't play that card here. What? Yeah, let's hear. It. You know. Yeah, Brandon Moreno's Mexican. I mean, this is this is stuff I I just heard from listening to watching all these cappers, man. I can't verify they're true, but. This one I heard today from eBay's Fight Predictions. He was pre presented in this video. His link should be in the description. I put the descriptions up before I started the live stream. His link should be there. He'll cover a short break. He does the whole breakdown of Figueredo versus Moreno. But in his full card breakdown, he he's the one that told me all about the whole, you know, switch and training camps midway and – you know, he's like a Lego fanboy, Brandon Moreno. He loves playing with toys. He loves the Cheers. Legos. Huh? I don't care. Just, just, just hot, hot topic. Just bringing it up. Legos. My kids got a whole room full of Legos. They suck to step on. Anyway, um, so, yeah, this was a, a fun. We're almost to the one hour mark, so I'm going to cut this off. But I appreciate you guys watching. Gather the info. You guys already know who to pick. All these, I will stroll it slow. You guys know who to pick. We got Adolfo Vieira, pick Kim, Saeed, 
I'm not I'm not confident. Least confident pick out of these fights, and then Trevin Giles. But Dave is taking Michael Morales, the Ecuadorian, because he beat Nikolai. He's an Baron Ecuadorian Kinsuka. wrestling superstar. Yeah. How Ecuadorian wrestling. Did they ever get bronze in their history of wrestling? Oh, no, nah, I don't think so. They never made the Olympics. <laughs> I, th- I think year. they got the I think they got the participation trophy last time they were in the Olympics. Oh, this congratulations for making it over to our Olympic village. <laughs> That's about as far as they got. But um anyway, I appreciate you guys watching all six of you. It was, it was a good time tonight. Now it's, I can I can rest. I gotta get up early. So Dave, I appreciate you tuning in, in the last minute. I know you had a lot of important things to do tonight. <laughs> but uh, I know I'm, I'm messing with you. But uh, thanks, guys. We're still on for Friday, right? Live stream. Should be, yep. Yeah. Awesome. I should be out coming back from Boston Friday morning. So I should be all primed and ready to go Friday evening for that. All right. Take care, guys. Yeah, I, I am in Boston. It's work related, man. Work related. I, I'm all over the Northeast for work. Tonight, I'm actually in Woburn, which is like a suburb of Boston, like on the outskirts of Boston. Calvin Qatar, though, the at the bar, hotel bar, they're all like, they have a poster of Tom Brady, even though I'm like, he's in Florida now, you guys. But anyway, <laughs> Tom Brady's a fucking saint. Don't After you this year, they're grasping at straws. Huh? After this year, they're grasping at straws. Oh, yeah, who you got? You think it's going to be Buffalo and Tampa Bay or Buffalo well, and Green Cowboys Bay? My Cowboys didn't do very fucking good last weekend. Oh, I know. A choke. Talk about choke. Unbelievable. I had them winning and covering five points. Look yeah, me too. Me <laughs> yeah, too. piss poor. His poor, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, who you got for the for for the big game? I'm gonna I, fall I'm back like, on, on I don't, Green Bay or Kansas City. I'm I hope Kansas City, but I don't know. Buffalo looked so. What they beat the Patriots forty seven to something in the wild card game? Yeah, but the Patriots sucked. Yeah, the got, Patriots were. Sure. You know what? If you look they at the sure. um, they were good with the seasonal play, defense. They were number two. You know, for like least scored, least points scored against all season, they were number two, right behind the page or the Bills were number one. Hey, listen, as a Dallas Cowboys fan, I know as soon as the postseason starts, you can throw those stats out the window. Yeah, I know. You're, you're absolutely you right. Yeah. Oh, Jerry Jones had the whole Cowboys blazer on, all sparkly with the stars. <laughs> Boy, did he look like an asshole after they lost. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. Right. Uh, Packers Chiefs. That's a good one, simple man. I think so also. I want I hate to say it, but I'm gonna I, I think probably um Tampa Bay Bills, but uh but and I I don't I I'd rather see Packers Chiefs just because I my parents are Bills fans, my brother's Bills fans. I'm a Jets fan, so I can't say shit, but no. These two teams are peaking at the right time. Yeah, well. the Bill's schedule was weak. Remember what you know? My favorite, one of my favorite games is when Jacksonville beat them this year. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys, I gotta go. It's late. I gotta work in the morning. So good night, y'all. Night. Thanks for tuning in. Tune in Friday when me and Dave will be doing after the faceoffs. We'll take a look at that Cody Stammen fight. That'll be a good one to look back at because um, Saeed and Cody. I th- I'm still on the fence with that. What was the other one that uh, – oh, Davidson Figueredo. We'll see how he comes in looking. Yeah, you know? he's going to have to be – we have to watch the weigh-in for that one. Right. If, and if he – I'm going to watch media day too. You can – last fight, you can see it during media day. You can see he was drained in the week trying to make the weight. So I'm going to watch media day, see how he looks then too. Today was just um, MMA junkie interviews. Like it's not media day. It's like media strum or something. Media interviews weird. You know, media day, what I'm talking about, they're all on the panel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And getting barraged by all the all the interviewers, like all questions from all angles. Anyway, gotta go. Later. Thanks. Bye.